So just another quick video based on a post in a virtual GTA Facebook group about a guy who was asking how to do something else in a specific skin. And that kind of uh, resonated with me because I actually used some of the better skins to rediscover or remembering some features uh, by looking at these skins, which often have options for it. So uh, I don't actually use the skins, but they can be great for rediscovering features that's been added um, that you've forgotten about. It's like, oh yeah, that was this thing. Let me look into that again. So like I said, I always use the, the default skin for, for actual DJing. Uh, but then the default skin had a lot of features are hidden. That can be because it's simply just a, 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 it's just a setting. It's just an option in here. And God knows a lot of those, right? In this thing. Um, so there's so many options in here. So uh, that can be a kind of hard to remember all of them and what they do. Or it can be because it's a relatively new one uh, feature, so it hasn't been added to the default skin yet. Uh, might never be. And it can also be because it's really meant for a specific controller or, or something like that. So uh, so they were never put into the general uh, skin because, well, it wasn't meant for that specific controller, but it can be used on all controllers. So um, I find that if when I look into some of the more av advanced skins, I... Uh, I, I, uh, that triggers my memories. Like, yeah, I remember this being in the change log. I, I remember playing with this. I never got around to using it. So, for instance, recently I used into the relatively new uh, skin here called Vance TT, which is a pretty cool skin here. So, let's take a look at that one. And then you can see that's a ton of options. And I think this is a this is busy the skin, but it can really I can use it. Uh, to make me remember some of these effects. So let's just go through some of them really quick. Uh, just like from left to right, from top to bottom. So of course it has a lot of skin options. And uh, uh, one of the interesting ones maybe is the CPU meter. That's normally system. You can see it's firing over here right now. But if I just want to see whatever audio, uh, whatever resource the audio is taking, I can click that and you can see that's not taking anything. And it also reminds me that you can actually see a whole bunch of info while hoovering over this thing. So you can see all this stuff it's doing, uh, basically, when using system resources. So that can be a, a great little feature to remember. Next one uh, I, was, I was looking at was actually uh, the daylight mode. So that's this thing. So that, that's also in the default skin. But... Uh, even though uh, if I'm in a pretty bright room, I rarely play outside. It's cold in Denmark most of the year. But in a pretty bright room, I never remember to, that this exists. But it's, in, it's everywhere, so you can always just be enabled. Going back to this thing, there's also something, something like the skin FP, FPS, the frames per second. Uh, that's a setting, but you never really notice it unless something's going wrong, right? So if I play this track, for instance, like this. And of course, this is bobbing along, but then change the skin FPS to the highest one. You can see it's a lot more smooth now. That of course takes resources, but it's still pretty cool to remember that you can actually do this stuff. So uh, that's like the skin FPS frames per second. Then there's actually, if you look in here, you can change some things, things like the scratch filter quality. When was the last time you changed this, this, the quality of the scratch? That's actually the quality of the scratch. And you can change that to different settings here. Uh, if you And of course, the higher the setting, the more the resources. But you can it's definitely a setting that you should look into if you do any kind of scratching. Same with pitch quality. If, uh, if you have uh, use, uh, uh, use, um, use the time stretching, so you want uh, to not be chipmunks. So... Uh, you have the that enabled, then you should definitely look and in, look into pitch quality, see how how well your time st uh, stretching should be, um, and that should always be the best if you ask me, at least if you have the laptop for it. So I know that, so that's not really a surprise to me. I, I always said that when I go to a new laptop, but um, that's definitely something that's worth no noticing and looking into if you haven't thought about it in a while. Um, then there's the filter resonance. So actually the filter, hit down here, so if I play the track again, it's the filter. The kitchen floor. It seems like you, can't take no more. you might have forgotten that that actually has settings. 
uh, but this manual shelf set, of course, it's also in the setting in the, the general options. But this actually shows it, so we can say, no, let's make it strong. The resonance part, that is. You lay there on the kitchen floor. It seems like you can't take no more. I'm sorry, but. So just a totally different filter all of a, all of a sudden. So things like that. And uh, moving on, uh, we could look at things like. Uh, we have the Ask the DJ feature. That's a really cool feature. And you can also monitor it where you get like requests coming in uh, from people's phones and stuff. Definitely worth, uh, worth noticing and playing with if you haven't done that in a while. So that's important. And then the Stems Creator tool, this thing. So, uh, no, that's not that thing, sorry. This one. So, uh, that's uh, if you already have separated stems from somewhere else, like you already got the stems from the producer or whatever, you can actually put that in to uh, to uh, to Virtual DJ to create a Virtual DJ prepared stems. Just and then after that, uh, Virtual DJ won't know that it's not a, a stem file that is created itself, a stem split splitted stems file. Uh, it'll just use it, and of course, it'll be the best possible quality because it is actually stems from. Uh, from the producer, right, from uh, from the studio. So that's a way to create stems files uh, that are based on actual stems. Um, I kind of forgot that was an option too, until I checked this again, I have to, I have to be honest here. Um, and then there's the six effects mode. Uh, right now we're looking at three effects up here, but it actually has a six effects mode. So you can use six effects at the same time here and control them, right? Um, that's a pretty cool feature that I tend to forget. And it actually also has a separate effect slots for the microphone, if you have a microphone connected. Uh, so you can set uh, an effect only on the, on the microphone uh, for, with its own effect slot. Pretty cool stuff. Um, and you actually also have release effects. So that sounds pretty cool, like it just happens. It's actually just a slot and then some uh, some mappings, which means some controls, are set up to actually use this release effect when you release effects, or if you double click it you know, while uh, while pressed, all this sort of stuff can be done. So it's actually just a slot, but it's pretty cool to know that Virtual DD actually has the ability to handle release effects. I kind of forgot that too uh, for a while. Yeah. <clears throat> And then you have something like uh, effects and just some uh, some stems. That's probably pretty fresh in memory, but of course, uh, if you look down here, it's play a track, you lay there on and you can just put the delay on the book. It seems like you can't take, can't take no more. more. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but when my hands and stars, I just can't. So we've done a lot of, of stem stuff. So that's probably pretty fresh in memory. But it's pretty cool that it's here and it's readily available. It's just a button here for what you want to use uh, the effects on. And then we have, uh, if we go further down, we have some in this line down here. We have things like the mix effects. Those are only on the, uh, the beginner skins, uh, the beginner layouts in the default skin. But that's also worth noticing. So that's generally what happens on top of crossfade when you crossfade. So for instance, like this. You lay there on the kitchen floor It seems like you can't take no more I'm sorry but when my hands and stars I just can't get enough And tie it down So that's standard crossfade Then we'll put a mix effect on some top Now it's a filter But you can also change it to something else. I'm running, running like now I'm changing it to noise. So. You get this swoosh on top of it. So that's pretty cool stuff and worth noticing, even though you're using the pro skin, that this mix effect stuff can actually still be used. The same, same goes for the, the smart fader down here. So that's actually uh, something that was put in there because of some of the recent uh, uh, Pioneer controllers. But that basically sets 
both decks to the same BPM, tell something to the low end and the filtering while doing the mixing, so something like this. You lay there on the kitchen floor. It seems like you can't take no more. I'm sorry, but when my hands are screaming, I just breathe. But you are inside the so you'll be here, won't sneak around. I'll lace you up. And that's actually even easier to. Uh, to spot, if you will, if you uh, if you use something with a with a bigger BPM difference, so something like this maybe, so it, it instantly jump to 125 BPMs because uh, the the smart fader is enabled, but now it'll just drop down when you go in the other direction, so something like this. You lay there on the kitchen floor. It seems like you can't take no more. So basically, instant perfect crossfading, if you will, including the EQ and the BPM changing. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool feature that uh, everybody should basically know. Uh, the smart fader uh, and a um, couple more. Uh, we have, of course, the crossfader curve. In case you've forgotten about that, and we also have the the, the settings for it. So you can set it to smooth, or you can set it to the default, which is full, or Scratch, so that's, that's the sharp cuts and stuff. So pretty cool stuff that's uh, instantly available here. And then you can go, go straight to mono if you want. So that's like scripted mono. So now you're playing in mono. Very, very simple way to do that. Uh, if, in case people forget that there's actually a script for that. Um, and finally, I wanted to mention uh, uh, zero dB. That's called headroom in this thing. And of course, you can set it like you can always can to, to zero to minus something, whatever, but but it's it's something you should always consider. So it's pretty cool that it's, it's right here available. And uh, so you don't forget about it here. So so generally that's how I, uh, I, I use these interesting skins to just, oh yeah, that's all of these features, but I've kind of forgot about some of them. So it's a great little reminder of that before, of course, I always go back to my good old default skin. And that's especially why I always DJ but it's still worth using these uh, advanced skins to remember all these features. And some of these uh, features I've done videos on in the past, and for some of them, I'll, I'll, I'll just link those in the video description in case anybody wanna look into it in more detail.